The aftermath of that horrible massacre in Boulder, Colorado. Ten people were killed, a suspect in custody. Among those killed, Officer Eric Talley, 51 years old, an 11-year veteran of the Bolden Police Department. He was among the first officers to arrive at that King Supers grocery store. He became a cop actually a bit later in life. He was 40. And by the way, he was the father of seven children, ages 7 through 20. A horrible loss, and we are joined now, we are privileged to be joined by the father of the hero, Homer Talley. Uh, sir, welcome to Newsmax, and I am so sorry, so sorry for your loss. How are you? Uh, I'm okay, um, and I thank you for your kind words. Well, sir... Um, you're in the toughest position imaginable right now. What was your son like? <clears throat> My son was um, was a, a prankster. He was a guy who of, of, he had such high integrity. Uh, I he, he knew the difference between right and wrong, and he lived his life. Um, you know, in respecting his boss, his his uh, parents, his uh, everything. He was a man of faith, and he knows he knew <clears throat> he knew God, and he knew um, uh, well. Let me just say this. As far as what kind of man he was, we we had uh, conversations several times about his job, and he said, "You know, Papa," he says, "I'm trained to to call for backup." He says, "That's what they tell me. I have to call for backup." He says, "But I don't know if I can do that if somebody's in there getting hurt." I said, "You know, Eric, he might get killed," and he said, "Well." I don't want to do that. I don't want to get killed, but I, I don't know if I can wait, stand there and wait while people are getting injured. And from what I understand at this point, he did go in and was at the back of the store when he was killed. And that's all I know at this point. There is an alleged shooter. The shooter um, is in custody. Um, we know a little bit about his background. Um, born in Syria, a naturalized U.S. citizen, had some trouble in high school, was a Trump hater, according to his online activity, and he perceived himself to be the victim of Islamophobia. Um, I'm wondering right now, what thoughts do you have regarding this man? Uh, to be honest, I don't think a lot about him. He's uh, he's an unfortunate individual, it sounds like. I don't know. I don't know him. and uh, <clears throat> I don't hold any, I don't have any anger against him. I mean, that does no good for me. It does no good for him. It's just, uh, I, you know, I, this has happened so many times in our country, uh, the shooting that, you know, you know, we're just not approaching the problem, in my opinion, in the correct way. And it just keeps happening, and they keep trying to do things that don't work. And <clears throat> and uh, I, I just don't think about it. I understand. Let me ask you this. We do see these um, all too often. And in the aftermath, well, we hear conflicting calls from politicians Again, from Joe Biden on down, there are calls for uh, more gun control, uh, renewed call for the assault weapons ban. Um, how do you feel about those calls and, and, and the dialogue that's happening right now? Well, I'll say this. My son was, would be embarrassed that his death was being used to further gun control. He was a Second Amendment person, and he, he owned an AR-15 of his own. <clears throat> He, uh, you know, my feelings on it are that well, you have a problem with crime, let's say, 
And so you look at the problem and you say, well, let's see, what can we do to fix this? Oh, well, we can take AR-15s away from every law-abiding citizen in the country. That'll fix the problem. Yeah, right. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Those are two separate things. The crime, in my opinion, should be approached from a social issue. I mean, we don't, if we don't have, uh, there's two things. There's morality that we need to establish in communities, and we need to focus on establishing that, the difference between right and wrong. And the other thing is an enforcement of the law. We need to enforce the law so people understand there are consequences to what they're going to do. Mr. Talley. The summer, I'm sorry. No, no, no. We Continue if you don't mind. This summer we saw people, you know, rioting, throwing rocks and stealing stuff out of stores and breaking windows and burning cars. <clears throat> and to my knowledge, there was very little of any accountability for any of that. And that just tells criminals, hey, you can do what you want. We're not going to, you're not going to pay any consequences for it. Mr. Talley, a friend of the family's, your family has set up a GoFundMe page. We'd like to put that on our, your television screen, our television screen uh, fundraiser for Officer Eric Talley's surviving family. And uh, generosity, uh, Americans are generous. And uh, your son made a very deep in impression on, on, on many who never met him. Sir. He was 40 years old, my understanding, when he actually became a police officer. That's a little bit late in life for a career change. Uh, I find it very interesting. Uh, what was he doing? And, and what I think he was in IT, is that right? And what made him make the switch? Well, he got a master's degree in computer uh, communications, and he got a, uh, a, a good job with uh, Avaya, it turns out, in, in Denver. And uh, he didn't like it. It was a desk. Well, he had to deal with a lot of um, the things you deal with in the corporate world, and he just didn't like it. And he wanted to to change careers, so he took a pay cut. I mean, a big one, to go work for the police department. And uh, he um, he loved it. He loved being a policeman. He's a people. He was a people person. He loved uh, engaging with people. And while he was very smart as far as technical goes, he didn't get to engage with people that much in his uh, tech job. But, of course, with the police department, uh, it was all the time. Yeah, yeah, sure. And, by the way, I, a black belt in karate, I think I saw a picture of him. Um, do you ever see him fight? In, 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 or, uh, I did. Yeah. Uh, he was very good at that when he was a little younger. But um, he was uh, he loved the discipline of, of martial arts, and uh, he was good at it. Well, we are very, very sorry for your loss. I mean, what words are inadequate, obviously. Um, our very best to you, and also we're thinking about the kids, seven of them, wow, from ages 7 to 20. Um, let's put that... Go fund me up there one more time, if you don't mind. And as we do that, um, Homer, Tally, anything else uh, you'd like to share or anything uh, you'd like to mention? Well, I just want to say that, that my son would be embarrassed to be called a hero. But I think he was. And I, and I, I, uh, I just want people to uh, know who he was and to remember him as he was. Because a lot of times things get embellished and whatever. This is one of the times that we're not. Mr. Homer Talley, uh, it is an honor to speak with you. And again, we are very, very sorry. Uh, let us know if there's anything we can do. We have your information. You have ours. To be continued, sir, my very best. Okay. Well, thank you for your kind words. Okay. Take care now. We'll be right back.